Good evening, and once again, the world is learning just how easy it is to get under the skin of the most powerful man on Earth. Today, after storming out of a meeting on infrastructure, what could have been a hugely popular issue for him, President Trump stepped outside and unloaded on live television. And no, that's not really normal, not even by the dim lights of these not normal times. If you didn't see it when it happened, you'll want to watch it now. And remember, to make it happen, all Nancy Pelosi had to do was say what she and others have been saying repeatedly for months. We believe that no one is above the law, including the President of the United States, and we believe that the President of the United States is engaged in a cover-up, in a cover-up, and that was the nature of the meeting. Well, that was at 10 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. From there, she headed to the White House for an 11.15 meeting with the President on infrastructure, spending something nearly every lawmaker likes, though some obviously differ on how to pay for it. The President showed up 15 minutes late, then complained for several minutes about what Speaker Pelosi said, as well as the Russia investigation writ large, and said he can't work with Democrats while they're investigating him. Then he walked out, and a short time later, stepped up to the podium, already equipped with talking points on a placard, which he then proceeded to echo. Good morning. So here's the bottom line. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. This whole thing was a takedown attempt at the President of the United States. So he was clearly upset, enough to slip into the third person as he railed against Robert Mueller's investigators, whom he accused of supporting Hillary Clinton and despising him. They hated President Trump. They hated him with a passion. They went to her big party after the election that turned out to be a wake, not a party. It was a wake. And they were very angry. He's speaking about himself in the third person, in case you're confused. I'm not even sure it's worth fact-checking the president what he just said there. Yes, a number of Mueller investigators contributed to Hillary Clinton. Some gave to GOP causes. Robert Mueller himself is a registered Republican, as is Rod Rosenstein, who appointed him. He's also a Trump appointee. We don't know if many or even any of them went to the Clinton election night party. But again, it's a fairly minor point. This, on the other hand, is not. Well, it turns out I'm the most, pr uh, and I think most of you would agree to this, I'm the most transparent president probably in the history of this country. Okay, if you haven't noticed this by now, whenever he says something that's not true, he tries to suggest that the people he's lying to agree with him. I don't know if you've noticed that. Keep it in mind the next time that's what he does. Keep it in mind, he might just be the most transparent person, president ever, if transparency means no longer having what used to be called White House daily press briefings, or if transparency means not having a note taker in the room when you meet with Vladimir, Pu Vladimir Putin, or if transparency means letting the public find out about the White House meeting you had with top Russian officials a day after you fire your FBI director from Russia state news agency, or if it means speaking with Robert Mueller in person or not even answering written questions from Mueller on obstruction of justice. If that's what transparency means, he's a regular Crystal Mountain stream. The president also tried to suggest that we all agreed on this. I don't do cover-ups. You people know that probably better than anybody. Again, you all agree with us. We can all agree on that. No cover-ups. He just doesn't do them. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so yeah. that... I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and, I've spoken, to me and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes. Um, and it's all the yeah, stuff, the all the stuff, because, you know, you never know where that company, no, you never you know where he's going to be. Gets it by Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. Maybe he gets hit by a truck. One person on that tape, the president's former attorney, now in prison, both he and the other person, the president lied repeatedly to the public and to investigators about it. But that wouldn't be covering it up, would it? How about all the other instances Robert Mueller documents in his volume on obstructing justice? Is any of that a cover up? How about trying to fire Mueller and getting his White House counsel to lie about that and firing Comey? You might call that and all the rest things that persons who don't do cover ups don't do. In any case, as we said at the top, neither the accusations nor the president's denial are really all that new, something Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer was quick to mention. Hello. There were investigations going on three weeks ago when we met, exactly. and he still met with us. But now that he was forced to actually say how he'd pay for it, he had to run away. Well, as you might imagine, the president characterized it differently. 
I just wanted to let you know that I walked into the room and I told Senator Schumer, Speaker Pelosi, I want to do infrastructure. I want to do it more than you want to do it. I'd be really good at that. That's what I do. But you know what? You can't do it under these circumstances. So get phony investigations over with. Well, keep it honest, however you characterize the president's walkout, the notion that nothing can get done until the investigation ends, that's just it's not how politics work. When Richard Nixon was being investigated, he still managed to work with the Democratic-controlled 93rd, uh, 93rd Congress on a string of important legislation. So did Bill Clinton during his impeachment. That's what politicians do, even in times of stress and strife and investigations. They are still expected to do their jobs. We'll talk tonight about how one person, as not Senator Schumer, also seems to have a unique talent for needling the president. For some reason, maybe it was lack of confidence on his part that he really couldn't come match uh, the greatness of the challenge that we have. Uh, didn't wasn't really uh, respectful of the reason of the Congress and the White House working together. He just took a pass. And it just makes me wonder why, why he did that. In any event, I pray for the President of the United States. And I pray for the United States of America. And more now from someone else who was in the room with the President this morning, Michigan Democratic Senator uh, Debbie Stabenow, who spoke earlier. Senator Stabenow, can you just walk us through exactly what happened in the meeting with the President today? Well, first, Anderson, it's great to be with you. And let me say, it was bizarre and also very disappointing. And the reason it's disappointing is because the need to invest in roads and bridges and water and sewer systems and high-speed internet and you know new electric grids, all of these things are so important and people want us to work together to get things done. So the president walked into the room. Uh, we, uh, all of the, our leadership, Democratic leadership in the House and Senate were there. The Secretary of the Treasury was there. Uh, there were other people around the room. And instead of sitting down, he just stood at the end of the table and proceeded to, um, he was holding up an article or some news release and proceeded to talk about um, how uh, he'd love to work with us, but he can't because Nancy Pelosi, our speaker, had uh, uh, said something he didn't like in the morning. They had tacked him at a meeting earlier in the morning, said something that uh, he didn't like, and so he went on and on and on. Uh, we've heard it many times, no collusion, he hadn't done anything wrong. He went on and on and on, and then he said, I can't, uh, I'm not going to be able to work with you guys on anything, uh, and something like, unless the investigation stopped. It was something like that. And then he turned around and left the room. And uh, Speaker Pelosi was incredibly gracious. She said to everyone there that we were disappointed. The fact is that we were asked to bring our priorities for what needs to be fixed in infrastructure. What do we think is important? We brought a 35-page document with our priorities, and the president had agreed that he and his team would put forward ways to pay for this. Uh, and and we, were gonna, we thought we were going to have a discussion uh, and begin a negotiation to actually get something done. It is kind of extraordinary. I mean, if if it was wor some words of Nancy Pelosi that, uh, you know, it's apparently referencing part of, of uh, her saying that, uh, you know, the president is accusing him of engaging in a cover-up. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, presidents before have been accused of all sorts of things by people in Congress. I mean, you look at Bill Clinton as being investigated. Right. President Obama exactly. is being investigated. And yet... They were still able to make deals with people. Right. The idea that everything shuts down because the president's upset, it just seems like right. somebody who is allegedly a great deal maker is throwing a tantrum. Well, it, it was, you know, very bizarre. And in looking back on it, I think he was looking for an excuse not to have the meeting. And that's only my perception. But we came with what we had promised in terms of our priorities. He was supposed to provide what he thought was the way to pay for this. You know, he was willing to spend one half trillion dollars on a tax cut mainly for the wealthiest Americans. And so we are saying, OK, so how are you going to pay for this on infrastructure? On the flip side of it, though, I mean, was it wise for Speaker Pelosi to make these comments right before before this meeting? Because, I mean, if Democrats are truly interested in working with the White House, which some Republicans say 
they're really not interested in, in having an infrastructure deal because they, they don't want to have anything that shows the president having a success. Would something like saying what Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi said, does that actually, doesn't that hurt the effort? Anderson, this president tweets multiple times a day attacking people. We are talking about ongoing questions here and investigations. Suddenly to have an internal private meeting that she had with her caucus and something that she said be a reason not to move forward on behalf of the American people to solve one of our biggest needs, which is rebuilding America, creating tens of millions of good-paying jobs, it, to me, it doesn't add up. 